of our offering and we're going to call Minister Ron Lee James to come forward right now and he will be doing that for you. Amen. Can the church now praise the Lord? Oh, you can do better than that. Can the church now praise the Lord? Look at your name and tell them it's given time. Amen. If you turn your Bibles with me to Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. And it says, How will man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, Wherein have ye robbed thee? And tithe in an offering. Ye are cursed with a curse, 
for ye have robbed me even the whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be need in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not pour, open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be not room to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourers for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Test me in this way, says the Lord of hosts. God challenges people to give according to this law so that he can bless them. And this is one of the very few times in the Bible where I've seen where God has really challenged his people or God puts out that kind of challenge. Because too much time people get caught up or hung up on the month and they do miss the promise. It's amazing to me that people who trust God for their salvation, their eternity in heaven, won't trust God with their finances. But what's the logic in that? If we can trust God for our eternal destiny, don't you think that we can trust God with our careers, our finances, and our giving? I'm reminded of a story of a man. He gave up 90% of his income. But the money came in much faster than he can give it away. And what he said is that I shoveled it out and God shoveled it back. But God had a bigger shovel. And I'm reminded about another story about a young man who went to the store with his mother. The shop owner, a kindly man, passed him a large jar of candies and invited him to help himself to a handful. The boy held back. So the shop owner pulled out the handful for him. So when he reached outside, his mother asked why he had suddenly been so shy and wouldn't take the handful of candies that offered. And the boy replied, because his hand is much bigger than mine. <laughs> How much do you believe that God's hand is bigger than yours? So when God says that he will open up the windows of heaven, he just he didn't say that he will open up the windows of only finances. Somebody may give you $100 and you give them 50 with interest. But God blesses you with favor. And his blessings goes beyond the finances sometimes that we do expect. Because I don't only want increase in my finances, but I want healing. I want restoration. I want a relationship, a closer relationship with God. So when God said he was open up the windows of heaven, your expectation has to be beyond the finances that you're going to get. What's the point of getting so much for finances if you are not healthy enough to spend it? So I would encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, that give. Give unto the Lord. And when you invest in God, I believe He, when we invest in God, I believe that God does not only shovel back finances, but also opportunities. Amen. He shovels back favor. He offers to help when we are sick. And he also strengths when we are weak. God's hand is bigger. His shovel is bigger. His wallet is bigger. His generosity is bigger. His love is bigger. His grace is bigger. And I'm sure we can all say that we serve a bigger God. But when you give tonight, I want you to make it a bit different. I don't want you just to give, but I want you to believe and know who are you giving to. And if you need me to remind you today, and you can help me with this, the God who is in the mountain is the same God who is in the valley. The God of the day is the same God in the night. The God who is in the shelter is the, the same God who is in the storm, for he is the shelter in the time of storm. And of course, he is the great physician. So when we rob God, we are actually robbing ourselves. We are robbing ourselves of the spiritual blessings of God and God provision. When we give, I believe it's less about giving uh, to the church, but it's more about giving to God, because that is who we are giving to. So we are left with a church, we are left with a choice tonight as the usher comes. How will we treat God? Will we rob God by not giving our tithes and offering? Or will we be faithful in giving to God 
what it is. I want us to all take our, get our offering, and I want us to all stand with our offering. And we're gonna ask the ushers, two ushers, to come forward. So if you have an offering, I just would like for you to stand. And if you don't have an offering, I would also ask you to stand. Amen. And I want you to, when you give tonight, for those who can give, I want you to give expecting and believing that God is going to turn whatever situation that you have around. And I want you to give knowing, that, knowing and believing that all things are possible with God, wherever your situation might be. So if you would bow your head, just hold up your offering. And if you can bow your heads with me as I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time, God, that we can sow back into the kingdom. We thank you, dear God, that we can give back a portion for God what you have blessed us with. Father God, I pray for those who can give God and those who doesn't have to give God that you would also touch their lives. God, and they would stand strong in faith and knowing that you are the author and finisher, God, of their faith. Give us a heart and a mind and a spirit to, to give. Again, be a cheerful giver. And we give you all thanks, we give you all praise, we give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. You can start picking up the offering. And while the offering is being received, we're going to have a selection from the Cox Street Senior Choir. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. 